So I want to welcome you to my comic book room. I want to spend a little bit of time in this video showing you by subscriber request how I organize some of the comics that are in this room. If you're interested in more behind the scenes things as it relates to this room in terms of how things are hung on the wall, how I black out the window, the lights here in the room, you can actually take a look at some of the other videos here on the channel where I actually show you some additional behind the scenes footage and answer a lot of those questions. This video is really going to be focused on how I organize my bins. And I'm doing this again because several people have asked me this question over several weeks. And I feel like if I keep getting the same question, I should probably record a video to kind of explain it. But what I will tell you, is that there is no magic here. There is no magic to how I choose to organize my collection. I'm pretty confident that there are other people out there that have much better ways of organizing their collection. Uh, but, but my collection is, is something that kind of waxes and wanes. And, and the reason that I say that is because if I go out and buy a large collection, I have to integrate those books into my collection. If I sell off some books, I have to pull those books out of the bins. If I send a bunch of books off to CGC, then I have to take those books out, send them out, and then find another place for them when they come back slab. So my, my collection is kind of always in flux. And so what you're gonna see here is, this is not make-believe. This is honestly how I organize it for better or worse. And again, there is no magic here, but because people have consistently asked the question, I want to acknowledge it, so let's begin. So the bulk of my collection actually sits to my left, and as you can see, most of it is in raw format. There's only one bin, this one right here, this white one, that is actually a graded bin. Everything else is basically in the raw format, and you can see there's a combination of boxes here. I have some of the plastic BCW bins, which I absolutely love, but because those can be pretty pricey, I tend to rely upon uh, some less expensive options for the bulk of the collection. I do like these uh, printed bins a lot better than your standard white bin. And the reason for that is because it's double walled and this wrap, this coating that they put on there actually reinforces these, uh, these bins pretty well, which allow you to stack it several uh, boxes high without fear of crushing the, the bin that's down on the bottom. And I actually have a review of these elsewhere on the channel if you're interested in learning a little bit more about that. But I, I have white bins here and I'll show you those in just a moment, but the bulk of the books actually sit in these, um, in either the plastic BCW bins or the printed uh, bins. And again, I like both, but because one is really expensive, I tend to rely upon some of the other options to store my books. And what you'll notice here as you look at the collection is that a lot of them just have these sticky notes stuck on them. And part of the reason for that is because, again, the collection is kind of always in flux. 
And so I use the a little bit of painter's tape and the sticky note just to be able to organize the collection so I can easily identify what happens to be in one bin versus another because books will shift around in the collection. All of these bins right here in this, this row starting at the very top all the way down to the bottom are all amazing Spider-Man. This entire stack basically starting at 216 down here on the bottom going all the way up to basically 799 about 800 there's some 800s i have stored elsewhere but this is all amazing spider-man that's actually not all of it I actually have several other bands of amazing spider-man i'll show you in just a couple of moments uh but that's what all of that is and then over on this side i basically have the books organized and in a couple of different ways so if you take a look at that label right there, you can see that there's several different things kind of listed on there, but they are all kind of uh, very similar to one another. So you have Spider-Man, you have Peter Parker, Miles Morales, you have Spidey, you have some annuals, and you have Spider-Man Unlimited. So that's one way that I kind of organize my books. Yes, all by title if I have lots of them that are basically the same as illustrated by the ASM bins, but also by character. And that's just a good way to kind of organize things, especially if you only have, in this case with Spidey, I think I have four Spidey titles, but I have a lot of the Spider-Man from the 90s. I have a handful of the Miles Morales. So this is just a way for me to kind of group things by one particular character and have one bin to actually go to if I need to add a book or if I need to find a book for a video or for some other purpose. Another way that I kind of organize the collection, again, down here, if I don't have a ton of books for a particular character, I'll actually organize them based upon a theme. And in this case, you might be able to actually guess the theme. I actually consider it to be cosmic. So in this particular bin, I have Thanos Quest, Infinity Gauntlet, uh, the Infinity Countdown, some Miss Marvel, some Captain Marvel, and also some Silver Surfer. And because I had a little extra space in this bin and I had a few books uh, that couldn't go somewhere else, I stuck some cable in there as well. So it's just, I like to be flexible because again, you have to shift books around. So just again, another illustration of how I will organize uh, a bin or two. Down here, you have, you know, Batman, and some DC books mixed with some Avengers. Why? Because I had an empty box and those books fit in there. Down on the very bottom, that is an entire bin full of nothing else but Image Comics. And I've had a lot of Image Comics over the years, uh, but I don't actually continue to collect them. So I store all of the image down there in the very bottom. And again, it just continues over on this side, similar type of uh, way to organize things. By, by title, by um, theme, by character. There's lots of other ways to actually do it. And you can just see some examples there on screen. Back over here, I just did a redo of the Random Run series from back in the day. So you can actually see that on the right-hand side. That is basically a short box full of nothing but Web of Spider-Man. And if you watched that video, you probably saw that I have a lot of Web of Spider-Man, but I have a lot more that never actually made it to the screen. On the, uh, the left side over here, you can actually see a couple of other titles. It's a, it's a mishmash of things. There's some all new Wolverine, which is basically X-23, which is one of the titles. You have Spider-Gwen in there, and then you have some uh, Carnage, Venom kind of things that are kind of mixed in there. Again, just because of space limitations, uh, that organization made sense for me. But one other thing that I wanna point out here to you, and you, you should be able to see this actually on screen, is you can see this red thing right here. What I do in a lot of my bins is I will actually use a, a, um, a backing board or some other piece of material that serves as a, a protective barrier just to kind of protect that hole in the front. So when you stick your fingers in there to move the, the, the bin, you don't wanna scratch the book or damage the book. So I tend to use these dividers of some sort, whether it be a backing board or in this case, a plastic divider to basically protect that very first book that is in the front of my comic book bins. And uh, again, I picked those things up and I honestly don't remember where, but they work pretty well. And one of my old systems I actually used to write the books 
on a post-it and actually stick it to that thing in the front. But as you can see, there's only so much space to be able to read there. And I have a lot more books that fit uh, on a on a full-size post-it versus in this little window. So again, just an evolution of my approach to organizing comics. Down here at the bottom, uh, this is one of, uh, one of the stacks of books that sit at my feet. Uh, these are basically uh, two bins full of books that I actually give away. So when people send me AOKs and things like that and tell me that I can give books back to the comic book community, I store them in there. And then as I do an AOK or if someone buys a book, I end up just going to one of those two bins to be able to find a, uh, a book or two to give away to someone. And then back over here, that's where I store a lot of my, my materials and supplies, like backing boards, poly bags, all that kind of stuff gets stored in there. Uh, when I bring in books as part of the Go Collect giveaway, a lot of those books, again, are kind of stored in there, out of the way, away from my regular collection. Back over here, we have some additional white boxes just full of comics. Uh, and again, you can see a same, the similar kind of uh, scheme on this one. You can see that it's mostly just random books. There's some Submariner, some Iceman, Captain America, etc., etc. Just random books. Down at the bottom, the current run of Amazing Spider-Man actually goes over here. And I want to have quick access to this because I'm constantly buying the Amazing Spider-Man new series, so I kind of plug that there. Next to it, you can see that is basically a short box full of a bunch of ASM 800. Uh, because that was an 80-page book, it takes up a lot of space, especially when you buy a lot of the, uh, the various covers that were out there. And then this bin on the far right is actually one of my favorite bins. It's actually, it's a bin that does not change all that much but it is actually full of books from the Ultimate Universe, which includes a lot of those wonderful uh, Spider-Man Ultimate Universe uh, titles that came out with Bendis that I absolutely enjoyed. So I went ahead and grabbed that Ultimate Universe bin that we were just talking about. And you can see here that most of the comics are, are relatively well organized. Most things were bagged and boarded at the time that I, I purchased them. And a lot of people ask that question whether I rebag and board things. I do because I like things to be somewhat uniform. This one's a little, little messy. Uh, but but by and large, it's it's not in bad shape. But this one actually contains, uh, again, some of my favorite books here. I absolutely love this Ultimate Wolverine versus Incredible Hulk and actually picked up multiple copies of, uh, of issue number one just because I really enjoyed it. And uh, let's see what else is in here. A couple of cool books. Ultimates was really, really good read. Ultimates 1, Ultimates 2, Ultimate 3. I, I enjoyed that series. Couple There's Ultimates 2, really cool cover right there. And I've actually owned a lot of these books for uh, for quite some time. Let's see what else is in here. Ultimate Six. There's the Ultimate Spider-Man. Absolutely love that that title by Bendis. There's a uh, one twelve right there. Some cool books in here. What else is in the back of this? Ultimate Power. Some cool books. That right there is is one of my favorites. This was a fantastic series for Marvel Knights. This is the Sentry, first appearance of the Sentry. I wanna say I have two copies of that, I think. Yep, two copies of that. So if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you know this background. This is basically what everyone sees whenever they tune into one of my videos. But if you kind of drop down and go down below, what you actually see is where I store a lot of my keys and I actually use these BCW plastic bins that you actually saw earlier in this video to store a lot of those comics and I just keep them underneath this table skirt and I'll pull this up so you guys can actually see it and I'll tell you what's actually in these bins. So in this very first one is a bunch of X-Men books. These are lower number X-Men books that I keep here. These are two bins full of additional Amazing Spider-Man. Those are the low number. So that's a mostly, I think it's 30 something all the way up to about 189 or yeah, 189. And then this bin over here goes from 190 to 315. Next to that, that bin right there is full of keys. A lot of low number Amazing Spider-Man, uh, X-Men, you name it. Full of, full of keys, and then that's a little bit of an overflow of keys over there in the in the far corner. But I'll pull this one out, and I'll let you see what's inside of this one. So, 
we'll go ahead and unlock this. And what, you, what you'll notice here is that I try not to over pack my bins. I try to make sure that there's ample room in here so things aren't terribly tight. I just think that that's a better way of kind of keeping uh, my collection organized and in good shape. So a couple of uh, cool books here. These are a little bit of overflow books in the very back, but some low number Wolverine books that I was thinking about sending in at one point to CGC. That's uh, Solar Solar Zero. This is the first, uh, first appearance and origin of the Eternal Warriors. Really cool book here. First... Uh, Storm Shadow, this is a silent issue right there, issue number 21 of G.I. Joe. This is a really cool book. This is actually X-Men number 103. This is the first time that the name Logan is actually used. Really cool book. This is the first John Byrne uh, issue number 108 of X-Men. Marvel Age right there. Another Web of Spider-Man book. Cool Captain America. First appearance of uh, Nova. But again, this is kind of where I store a lot of uh, a lot of my keys. Really nice bloodshot right there. What's in here? Eternal Warrior, Fantastic Four, 49, 49, Batgirl 12. A couple of uh, first and second print there. A couple of cool books. Let's see if there's anything else in here good. A couple of Thanos books. What's that? 14. These books are actually stored in uh, in Mylar. You pro probably can tell that from uh, from the way that they sound and also look. It's 13. Let's see what else is in here. It's a cool book. There we go. X-Men number six. This is a pretty rare uh, graphic fantasy. Number one, this is actually the first appearance of Dragon, who goes on to be a Savage Dragon because of some lawsuits and, and things like that. Submariner, Let's see what's up here in the front. Some cool Spider-Man books here in the very front. Another Fantastic Four book. That's a cool book right there. So there you go. That's basically what I keep in that particular band. So back over here are four graded bins where I actually store some of my graded comics. I absolutely love these, these plastic bins here because they have the locking mechanism on there and I probably need to buy a couple more, uh, but I've been a little slow in doing so, but I will get around to it at some point. So there you go. That is the look inside of my comic book room, specifically my comic book bins and how I organize them or don't organize them depending upon how you look at it. But I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I definitely encourage you to give it a thumbs up. If you have any issues, questions, comments, or thoughts, don't hesitate to leave those behind in the comment section so that we can mix it up and have a good conversation. If you need to reach out to me, feel free to do so at ReggieCollects on Instagram or ReggieCollects at gmail.com. Take care.